This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is a very easy to do, do-it-yourself LED bar or RPM gauge. This is an LED RPM light strip. It's something as simple as this. It's a very easy project to do, and it's the kind of upgrade to your sim that is going to give that super pro look of those $100,000 simulators. Like I said, it's a very easy to do project. It can be done in under an hour, and it can be done even better for under $20, and just about anybody out there could do it. It's that simple. Now, it is an electronics project, which means you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a soldering iron, a basic soldering iron to do the job. Job. But for me, I use a soldering iron because it has more consistent temperature and a little more precision. But again, being as simple as this project is, any soldering iron will do. And you may also want other electronic supplies like solder, flux, heat shrink, and even some extra wire as needed. The RevLite strip will be controlled by SimHub, and SimHub is a really cool piece of software that can control a variety of different sim racing related products like shakers, displays, and in today's case, LEDs. SimHub is donation based, but will set you back about five bucks. You also need an Arduino Nano, this tiny, tiny little electronic circuit board that only costs about four bucks each, but I bought five of them for 15 bucks on Amazon. And then finally, you'll need an LED strip that is compatible with our project. Basically, any LED strip that is part numbered WS2812B will do. I bought a 144 LED light strip that could be the world's largest RPM gauge, or it could be cut into segments to make multiple rev lights and give them away to your friends or have other projects that you've taken care of. Mine cost me 21 bucks, and I can actually make four pretty long bars from that amount of LED. I'll be using 37 LEDs, or about six bucks worth of this strip for my project. So five for the software, four for the Arduino, and six bucks for the LED strip for a total cost of about 15 bucks. Plus, you will need a USB to USB mini, but I had a ton of those laying around in my extra wiring bin. So before we get started, let's get familiar with the 2812 LED strip. Typically, it will have three wires, red for power, white for ground, and green for signal. In my case, the strip I purchased can be powered externally and had two extra wires that I can ignore. Also, these LED strips are directional, and the wiring should always be attached at the front end in the direction of the indicator arrows on the front of the LED strip. On the 144 LED strip that I bought, it had an extra set of wires on the other end. These are for stringing multiple chains together, not for wiring to the LEDs directly. So I decided by a completely random manner that I wanted an LED strip of about 37 lights long. I figured that was about the right length for what I intended to use it for. So I had to actually cut my strip down to length. So on the strip, here is the lead-in wiring. Here are the directional arrows and 37 LEDs down the strip. I carefully cut the strip in half right between the LEDs. From there, I'm going to prep the wires for soldering by priming the tips with a little solder. I'm also extending these wires by a little bit and I'm prepping the three extension wires by priming both ends of their tips as well. From there, I add a piece of heat shrink tubing over the wires and then I solder the extension wires to the lead in wires. I then heat up the heat shrink tubing to cover the wires cleanly. Now it's time to attach the extend lead-in wires to the Arduino board. On the Arduino Nano board, there are a series of holes on each side. We are focusing on three holes in particular. One marked for power that is marked with a 5V, and it's the fourth hole up on one side. We'll push our primed wire into the hole and then heat it up with a soldering iron and you'll see the solder jump in and fill the hole. The white wire will go into the second hole on the same side marked GND for ground. Insert the wire, heat it up with the iron and make sure it's connected. On the opposite side of the board, the seventh hole up is labeled D4 for data four. 
I insert the green signal wire into that hole, hit it with my iron, and we are done with the wiring portion of the build. And you can see that the actual physical part of the project is just a matter of minutes if you have the tools and you know what you're doing. Now we still have to plug our mini USB into the Arduino Nano and then plug that into our computer and then we can go to SimHub and download the software from them. Once it's downloaded, we can install it onto our system and pay the licensing fee. It will then open up the SimHub software and we can move into programming our LED strip. When SimHub is first launched, it will open the Games tab and you'll see the monster list of Sims that it supports. To program our Arduino, we'll look on the left side for the Arduino heading about the fifth one down. When at the Arduino tab, there is a new list of headings at the top. We first need to program the Arduino and we start on the top heading called My Hardware. We are then given a choice of single or multiple Arduinos and for this we pick single. This brings up a new screen with a bunch of information, but we are looking for and focusing on the darker blue bar with the words Open Arduino Setup Tool. Click on that. This will open the Arduino Sketch Tool that will program our settings. We start on the left side of the screen and scroll down to WS2801 RGB LEDs. Here we will tell it how many LEDs are on our Arduino string. In our case, it's 37. Once this is entered, new options will open up. The next field is for the data pin. If you remember, we use data pin 4 for our green signal wire and we will then select data pin 4 on the tool. The next field is for encoding colors. There are three choices, GRB, RGB, and BRG. This will affect the color order of your LED lights. I tried RGB at first and then ended up switching to GRB for the right color order. If your colors are wrong on your strip, then redo this tool and change the color here. You can then ignore the next two fields and look to the right side of the screen. On the first field, we want the default Arduino Nano Loader and then under the Arduino Serial Port field, we open the drop-down and look for our Arduino. We are looking for the COM port with a USB serial CH340. Select that. Then we can click on the Upload to Arduino tool and the tool will program our Arduino. When that is completed, you can close the Arduino Setup tool window and go back to the SimHub screen. It should still be on the Arduino tab page and now on that top menu we are looking for RGB LEDs and click on that. There might already be some settings in the Arduino, but to make sure you understand how to make these changes, let's start a new profile and set the conditions that our lights will operate. From the RGB LEDs section, click on the Profile Manager heading. Then click on New Profile and give it a name. I will call mine Sean I Racing, and then in the next section, pick the game we are tailoring these settings for. In this case, I Racing. I also click on Save LED Brightness for this profile, and if you want, you can put the description and then click OK. We can now add independent effects for everything we want in game. I start with the RPMs first, as it is the main point of this project. I can choose between solid segments or a gradient. I prefer a left to right gradient and I select it. I can now change the parameters of these LEDs by clicking the drop down menu for this added effect. To see this effect in action while making adjustments, you can click on the Open Test Data Editor, which will bring up a new LED control menu. I can now click on the Game Running Radio button to simulate the game to the LED strip and can play with various lights. As I crank up the revs on the car to full, you can see it is only lighting up 16 LEDs from the first position. I can adjust the start position number for these lights and change the amount of lights that light up. I want to leave four blank positions on both sides of the LED strip, so I change the start position to number 5 and increase the lights to 28. After looking, I decided I want more room for the outer lights or indicators that I'm going to program. So I changed the start to position to 6 with only 27 LEDs, leaving 5 open on each side while at full RPMs. I can also change the color of the gradient from start to finish. There are also settings for when the red line blinking occurs, how fast it flashes, and whether it is controlled by percent or RPM numbers. 
and you can play with all of these settings to get it just the way you want it for you. Next, I will add another effect, this one being speed limiter animations. We can then adjust the conditions for these LEDs by clicking its drop-down. I set this one to occupy the first four positions and to flash between yellow and red. I then add a second animated speed limiter animation and set it to the last four digits on the opposite side. The effect is flashing indicators on each end of the strip and my rev light red line indicator taking the middle 27 LEDs. It's a nice balance. I then start adding other flag conditions to use those four end positions on both sides. Black flags, blue flags, white flags, and yellow. There are a handful of other effects that you could add to your own strip as well and all sorts of conditions because you can always affect the color, the way it flashes, which LEDs it occupies, and when it comes on. It's really fun and you can really dial it in to exactly the information you want. Now with me, I intended on putting this on the upper center bezel of my computer and this particular strip actually came with double sided tape on both on the back so I could just stick it on mine, hide the little Arduino board behind the monitors and everything would be perfect. Now you could take the project more seriously, you could buy an enclosure to put the Arduino board into so it's nice and clean, you could put heat shrink over the entire casing, you could even build if you have a th three 3D printer and enclosure to hold the strip itself, it's up to you. But in the rarest form, the rawest form, this is a basic unit. This would cost you about 15 bucks and it's 100% functional. So that's totally cool. I did do a cheesy finished version where I put a little plastic tubing over the wires and I actually used a Breath Savers mint box to hold the board, but it doesn't hold it all that well and I covered it in duct tape and it looks kind of cheesy, but still only about 15 bucks. I had all that crap laying around the house. So I hope this gives you an idea of just how easy this project is between this little board, a little bit of wiring, a little LED strip, a little bit of solder and SIM hub, 15 bucks. You've got a very pro looking gauge, a lot more excitement, a lot more immersion added to your rig. So it is easy. Anyone can do it and I hope you take on the challenge. I'm going to bring you a lot more of these type of projects in 2020. I promise this is a great way Way to kick things off for the year because I'm pumped to do a bunch of cool DIY make your rig badass type projects coming forward. So tune in for more of those. But that's going to do it for this one. This is the Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.